Hey, it's Andrew. This is going to be a one month review of the Samsung CJ791 external monitor. That's this monitor here. I've had this for about a month now. I did a video when I first got it, but I want to follow up on kind of my experience with it so far. As far as the features of it, it's a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. Um, it is curved display and it is Thunderbolt 3 capable. Um, as far as the dimensions, it has this stand that's about like 10 inches around circular design and then the inside is about 15 inches. And then the uh, length is, I think it's about 32 by 18. Um, sitting up from this dimension up to about kind of middle of the screen is about 16 inches. So those are the overall dimensions. As far as uh, specifications, as far as its capability, it um, is 100 hertz uh, refresh rate. It does allow for Thunderbolt 3. I'll get into that more with the M1 MacBook Pro. And then it has multiple ports. Um, it has a two separate USB-C ports. It has a Thunderbolt uh, port for 85 watts as well as 10 watts. And then it has a um, video input, an HDMI, HDMI input, and then an audio input. And I think it has two separate USB, uh, USB um, regular ports, like a USB-A port. So I've had it for a month. Uh, I really like the monitor a lot so far. There are some pluses and drawbacks. I'll get into that in this video. But um, what I'll do is set up the camera a little bit closer and show you the features uh, both on the screen and kind of what I have uh, set up with it. Okay, so here's the monitor closer up. Um, so as I was saying, it's 34 inches in this diagonal dimension. Um, the screen's up higher and then it has the stand down here and then this circular kind of stand um, at the bottom here. Uh, one drawback I have noticed with this is that this depth is pretty far, so this stand sticks out pretty far, so you don't have as much space here. Additionally, if you're looking to elevate the monitor a little bit higher, um, they're not really standard monitor risers to get this elevated. For me personally, I think I need my focal point a little bit higher at this height, so I might have to design a stand to get it up a couple inches to accommodate for this type of um, uh, the, the layout as far as the stand at the bottom portion. Um, that's kind of really the design as far as the actual monitor itself. It is curved. Um, what I have hooked up to it at this point is I've got um, uh, the Personas Airs 3.5 studio uh, monitor speakers. Those are connected to the audio jack. I have the Keychron K4 which is connected to a USB jack and then I've got the um, Logitech G305 mouse. Uh, this is actually connected to the cable um, for the dongle that goes into the USB. One kind of thing I did notice is that when I put the Personas Ares um, speakers in, it, the port's on the top portion here, and I did have it right next to the mouse when I first put it, put it in, and you could get some um, electrical sound through the speakers from that. So I did have to move this mouse um, separate because it's wireless. So that's uh, the keyboard, mouse, and studio speakers. At the top here, I have the um, Quintus um, monitor light bar. Um, this, is, this actually just plugs into the back into the USB port. USB um, port. I did have to US, use a USB-C adapter to connect it because there's um, only two USB-C ports and then two USB regular ports. So that's that as far as the monitor light bar. And then um, I have my actual M1 MacBook Pro here that's connected to the um, 85 watt cable that comes with the monitor. And that I just put here in a vertical format. I don't leave it open. Um, but that's kind of everything hooked up. I have had no issues as far as compatibility, as far as setting it up or anything like that. So if you're looking into kind of buying this, um, you won't need a docking station. You won't need any hubs for that. I do recommend getting a couple USB-C adapters because you might have some USB, USB cables that'll have to be connected to USB-C. And then I only had the um, Thunderbolt cable that came with it as far as plugging it in. I did try to, one feedback, I did try to connect this with the um, the charger that comes with the M1 MacBook Pro the Thunderbolt cable and plug it in directly. When I first got it, that actually didn't work. So it looks like there's something specific about this Thunderbolt cable that, it, that allows it to work with the monitor. But when you get the monitor, it comes with this cable. So that's kind of everything as far as the setup. Um, just kind of feedback as far as um, hooking it up. I'll show you real quick. Um, when I have my um, laptop uh, not connected, all you have to do is connect the Thunderbolt cable here 
into the top port on the M1 MacBook Pro, and then I'll just place it here. Um, initially, it won't necessarily acknowledge it. A lot of times, what you'll have to do is just hit the keyboard, um, and then it'll automatically pull up right there. So that's what what happens. But it happens pretty quickly. I haven't had any issues as far as the, the Thunderbolt cable recognizing it. Um, turning on and off the M1 MacBook Pro, you, if you turn it off and on and like restart it, it'll automatically um, start up with the screen on the external monitor. But if you, um, for instance, uh, unplug this and then turn it off and then turn it on, sometimes you have to open up the laptop first before you um, get the external monitor to identify with it. So let me just um, go there. Um, uh, then what we'll do is go through the features on the um, kind of uh, dongle here for what's available. So if you click this, it brings you to this menu. On the left, it'll tell you different sources. So this will shift between the HDMI display port or the Thunderbolt cable. On the right, it'll show picture-in-picture -picture mode as far as if you want to put two separate screens side by side, which I've never done. The middle's return. And then the top is this menu button. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit just because it kind of shows you that. Um, but on the, there's several menus here. We'll just go to the top. Uh, the top has picture. It shows um, Samsung Magic Bright custom mode. Uh, you can change the brightness, contrast, sharpness, uh, the color itself. Um, so you can go to that screen, just go return that way. Uh, you can change magic upscale on off uh, to, for enhancing detail and vividness. Eye saver mode to minimize eye strain. Game mode for certain games. Uh, response rate. Um, you can change it to faster, fastest. Um, I have it set it faster, but actually on the M1 MacBook Pro, it's set to 100 hertz, so it's responding that, and I've actually looked at that, and it's accurate. Uh, picture side, size as far as changing to auto versus wide, and then calibration report. On this screen here, it's, it allows you to do picture in picture mode. I've never really messed with this, so I can't comment on it. Um, and then on screen display allows for changing the transparency, position of the screen, language, display time of the screen. And then the system uh, setting will allow for self diagnosis with display port version, uh, an eco mode to minimize electricity use, a on off timer. Um, PC versus AV mode, uh, auto versus manual source detection, uh, switching between the auto sources, um, USB hub uh, being on or off, uh, key repeat time, um, power LED as far as working or standby, and then resetting it to factory, and then information will allow um, you to see like the basics of it. Uh, that's so that's the kind of menu portion of it if you return to the original one if I click left or right um, So this is left and then this is right. It allows you to change the volume on the built-in speakers I, I forgot to mention but it does have built-in speakers. They're pretty basic. Um, I would say equivalent to a, a laptop speaker um, If you're somebody that just wants like speakers for like basic sound it'll get by and be be everything you need um, but I ended up with the, the Personas Air speakers because I really wanted something for better, better audio and music playing. So if you want good quality uh, music uh, playing, you'll need something external to the built-in speakers. But if you just want monitors, a monitor with speakers built in, you could get by with this. Um, so that's the left and right keys. And then if you click up uh, straight from that, it'll kind of give you this brief kind of menu, which allows you to change the branch, uh, sorry, the brightness and then contrast, as well as um, changing like eye saver mode on or off, which just like creates it a little like duller as far as the picture. Um, but that's all the features here. Um, what I'll do is um, one comment is, um, I do want to mention that I do have the monitor light bar. One thing I ran into is needing 3M tape for that. I'll show you on the side what that looks like, um, just because a lot of people want that type of thing. Um, and it is a curved monitor, so I'll show you how I set up the monitor light bar. And then after that, I'll show you the different features on the back as far as the ports and how it's set up on the back. So give me one second. So real quick, this is just what I meant by with the Quintus monitor light bar, how I had it set up. I put on some 3M um, tape on the back, and so it clamps directly on this. 
and then it, this ensures that it doesn't slide and it doesn't put too much strain on the monitor. As you can tell, this is the curve of the monitor, so it's really good as far as viewing um, and getting the right angles with that. Uh, but that's I really want to make a comment on that. If you're looking into a monitor uh, light bar to put on this, you might have to run into that issue and put some 3M, but it's stuck right on without issues. So and now we'll look at the back of the uh, monitor. Sorry about the angle. Um, I had to slide the camera and the stand for the camera behind the, the screen, but I didn't want to unplug everything in the process. So um, here's the top um, right portion of the screen from the back. And what, what these cables are, there's three separate ports here. One is an audio cable, so this one goes to my speakers. All right. This one is the Keychron um, uh, keyboard uh, USB port, so that's a USB port. And then this is the USB dongle for the uh, wireless mouse. Um, what I did notice is that when I had this USB dongle right next to the audio port, I did get some electrical kind of interference on the speakers. So I separated these and spaced them out and that eliminated that problem. So that's it for that. Um, on this bottom portion here, all the cables go down to where the stand is, but uh, this portion here shows where you can plug everything in. I'll try to zoom in a little bit just so you can kind of see a little bit. Um, but here you have um, multiple ports. On the far right one is the power port, then there's an HDMI port, um, display port, and then there's two separate USB-C ports. One's the USB-C for 85 watts that goes to the actual power cable to your computer itself, and then this is a separate USB-C um, 10 port or 10 watt port. I have this connected to a USB adapter that goes down to goes to the light, so the light's directly plugged into here. And then I believe there's one other port um, at the end that's just like a service port. But that's everything as far as the ports um, that comes with it. It's pretty much everything I personally would need. And then what you can do is just put this cover back on, just make sure the cables aren't in the way, and it clicks right in. And then I'll try to see if we can get this on the video. Um, but if you look right here, um, it's hard to get there. But this this portion of this stand uh, comes off and you can run all the cables directly in here so it's a clean process, okay? So that's everything on the back side, on the right side, okay? So I have this portion's a little bit shaky, but this is on the bottom left side of the monitor. This is that power um, switch. If you hold this, that'll turn off and on the monitor. And this is what I was playing with a earlier for the different settings. So that's on the bottom uh, left side. So there you have it. That's pretty much everything for the Samsung CJ791 monitor when it comes to um, hooking it up with the M1 MacBook Pro. Uh, so far, after a month, I really like this monitor a lot. I'm very happy with the purchase I made. It pretty much is enc encompasses everything that I, I was looking for in a monitor. So looking back into your position when it was like six weeks ago when I was looking at purchasing this, I was really hesitant because I was worried about spending so much money uh, for this Thunderbolt capability and not knowing whether it would be compatible or not. And so I want to just give you feedback that it does work very effectively and efficiently in a streamlined fashion. Don't worry about that. Um, there are some little nuances to hooking it up and everything like that, but it does work. So if you're, you're hesitant from that st standpoint, go ahead with purchasing it. I don't think you'll have any, reg any regrets. It does allow you to avoid needing to purchase a dock station or a hub adapter. And so for me personally, um, I was looking into like the, the CalDigit like dock station as an alternative and hooking that up to an external monitor. Uh, those roughly cost like $250. Rather than purchasing that, I put it into this monitor and I'm very happy with not having to spend money on that because I feel like it was just a workaround for the M1 MacBook Pro with only having two ports. So that, that's the plus from this standpoint. Um, I do have a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse, uh, the speakers, as well as um, the monitor light, uh, light bar hooked up to this. That's pretty much everything that I would need for this type of monitor and the, this desk setup. I don't think there's anything else that I would necessarily need. There are additional display port as well as an HDMI adapter if you were looking for another, another external monitor on top of this. But the 34 inch size really is everything as far as the size that I would need. I don't think I'd anticipate needing another monitor, especially with the curved design. 
Um, but that's, that's everything for this monitor and this setup. I hope this video helped if you have any questions about purchasing this or the features or anything like that. Um, please comment or uh, place questions below. I'd be happy to answer anything about setting up the monitor, its specifications, any issues I ran into that I didn't mention in this, uh, this video. And I will put a link in the description for Amazon. If you're interested in purchasing this, please go ahead and uh, click that link and go through Amazon. It does support my videos. This isn't a sponsored video, so it does help out if you can do that. Uh, but otherwise, please subscribe and continue watching my videos. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.